Hey everyone and welcome to this week's project. This week I have a bowl blank that I picked up from my local Rockler store. It's a figured maple. It's three and a half by ten. Uh, so it's a little little bit um, not huge but it's of a good size. Um, it's a double A and for those of you who may not know uh, the blanks from Rockler are graded from an A to a triple A with uh, triple A being what is considered the best cut or grain. So this one was a double A right in the middle. Starting off as usual with the Carter and Son bowl gouge. And even though this is already round, um, I still, you still have to get it in balance. So that's what I'm doing here. You can see that there is a little shake. It's, it's out of balance. So take a few passes with the bowl gouge and go from there. So in this video what I'm going to do is a little bit of a how-to. Mostly I have been uh, doing voiceovers and telling you what I'm doing along the way. I've had some interest in uh, some of the uh, coloring and dyes and stains that I use. So that's what this is going to be. Um, it'll probably feel like the same kind of video but I might go a little bit more in depth of how I achieve the coloring with the stain that I'm going to use. So if you're interested in that, please stick around and watch through till the end. And if you're not subscribed yet, please go ahead and click that subscribe button. It would really help me out. It's free and I upload a new video, a new project every week. And if you don't want to miss any new content, be sure to click that little bell icon. I'll notify you when uh, I upload a new video. So I removed the tail stock uh, so I could get at the bottom a little a bit better, easier. Uh, and the skew chisel here, just kind of skimming the bottom to uh, decide where I'm going to put the foot. I am going to use a foot in a mortise and not a tenon. On the larger bowls like this, that's just my preference. I know a lot of people do the do the flat of the tenon and then uh, turn it off. Doing it this way uh, works for me. I think you can remount it if you need to. Um, sometimes you might need to. I don't know. Um, and it elevates it off the table or counter, whatever you have it on, just a little bit with that foot. Let me know what you guys do if you're a woodturner, woodworker. Uh, let me know what you do down in the comments with uh, turning a bowl like this. Foot or no foot. Yes, wood turning is messy. Wood shavings are fine. You know, you can sweep them up, vacuum them up, they go in your dust collector. Um, but no matter what you're wearing, you get wood chips, wood shavings on you. Especially with pole cuts. <laughs> if you're going to try wood turning, I would advise to invest in a uh, a nice apron that can keep uh, the shavings off of you as much as possible. I need to get one. <laughs> so I'm doing some pole cuts here. Shear scraping. And I am starting to sand 
summing with 80 grit there. So I sanded from 80 uh, up to 320 grit. Taking it off the faceplate here. Somebody had asked me what kind of screws I'm using in there and whatever I can find basically. Um, these ones happen to be Craig screws. Uh, that's what the attachment there the, on the drill is, is for the Craig type of screws with the square head. Putting the chuck into the mortise, tightening it up, and back on the lathe. And starting the hollowing process with the Carter and some bowl gouge. If you couldn't tell what that was in the sign language sped up, I was telling you that I was at 1000 RPM. This was held on uh, pretty securely, at least in, in my opinion it was. It felt safe to me. And I will have a link to all the products that I use or recommend down in the uh, video description. You can click on them and check them out for yourself, including Carter and Son bowl gouge and skew chisel that you've seen me use. And I waited a while to buy the uh, Air Trend Shield. I'm probably saying that backwards. Uh, pro um, and I wish I had bought it sooner. It is it Saves my lungs so much. So if you're thinking about it and hesitating because of the price. It is well worth it Even if you would turn a little bit any of that dust and shavings and it's just not good for you I changed out the tool rest for the interior uh, curved tool rest. This one is made by Robust Tools. I really like it. It's linked in the video description as well. And on to the coloring. So after I sanded up to 320, which was probably overkill actually, uh, I'm putting a base coat. Uh, this is the Intrinsic Color Collection by Hampshire Sheen. And this is the Earth Color. It is a brownish color. This is going to be the base coat and what really helps bring out the figure um, after we're all done. I know it looks terrible now. It took a while to get used to doing this because it, it does look so awful at the beginning, but you just have to work through it and it does come together. There are reasons why I'm putting it on like a 
preschooler. Some more sanding to take off some of the earth color. And this is just kind of a random. I don't have any uh, specific areas in mind as I go. Just trying to take off some of the brown. Some denatured alcohol so I can really see uh, where everything is. And that shows you where the green is popping. Doing this can show you, you know, where the earth color is, obviously, uh, but you see the kind of tiger stripes there, and then to the right of that, it's, it's kind of a blob of brown. That's an area where I might sand off a little bit more, uh, right there where I'm, where I am right now, um, just to be able to get some other colors in there, and have it not be a, you know, a brown blob. So I'm sanding in areas like that at this point, skipping over the tiger stripes. And not that these areas are bad, I just don't want, you know, a big patch of, of just brown. Um, it is meant to be a base color, but not, not all the way around. More denatured alcohol. And some hand sanding to uh, finish up where I need to remove some of the brown color. And more denatured alcohol. It is normal to go through that step uh, several times. This is a burnt orange that I'm using. And again, it's not going to look like much still at this point. You'll see a little bit of the tiger stripe come through, but it won't be anything like it will be in the end. And it doesn't really matter how neat uh, or uniform it's put on here. It, again, it just needs to be kind of all over it, but there can be missing spots. Uh, the highlighting color that's going to go on next is a honey color, and that is going to bring it all together. Not in this first pass, but uh, if you continue watching, you'll see uh, there'll be other uh, steps to this, because it still looks like preschooler at this point. Not that there's anything wrong with preschool art. I love me some preschool art. So as you can see, more sanding even after the color honey goes on. Just random spots that I'm sanding. Really looking for kind of the blah areas where there's a blob of uh, paint, I mean stain dye that I wanted to just sand back a little bit. Not all of it gone, but sand back. Because then when I put on some more of the honey color, it will look more like a highlight. Like I meant it to be that way. If that makes any sense.
Now it's starting to come together. After that, I uh, had some time to dry. I'm putting on one coat of sanding sealer. And after that, I had some time to settle in. I'm using the Axe Abrasive Paste. And step two would be the Axe Polishing Paste, which you'll see me with in a minute. If you haven't tried Axe, I do have a coupon code available for that and other great products as well. Use code PF15 for your 15% off Axe. Other companies that are offering my viewers uh, discounts, Total Boat, uh, if you need some epoxy, some resin, uh, check that link out in the video description. Starbond CA Glues, um, Ariat Workwear. Having some finishing uh, touches to the inside of the bowl. Using the calipers to make sure I don't go through the bottom. It's one thing you have to be careful when you use a mortise and a foot. It's, it can be deceiving of how much room you have left to go. Um, Sanding, sanding, and more sanding, and now some denatured alcohol. Let's see what we've got going on with the grain. Pretty happy with this for double A. I think it's uh, really a amazing grain in this. Scotch bright pad to uh, denib this before applying the axe abrasive paste and then polishing paste. And you can really see the grain start to come out. I mean, this is figured maple, and the grain on the inside almost looks like it's quilted. Axe polishing paste. And look at that shine. I'm pretty happy with the axe, as always. Taking it off the lathe and going to give the camera a close up and then of course some beauty shots at the end. I'm pretty happy with the way this one came out. Let me know what you think down in the comments. And now for the beauty shots in 3, 2, 1. And a few more photos coming up but while those uh, go through. If you watch to the end, please leave a comment. And since I love Halloween and this is orange, the comment, if you watch till the end, should be 
It's a Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. And until next week, peace out.